th that, that, that's the basic motivation here. Uh, for enterprise users, what you can think of is, um, let's say, having wireless uh, video training classes wherein probably you enter an enterpi enterprise space and then uh, you have a you, you you have a wireless video tra you have a, a wireless video training session going on for your uh, uh, employees, or you can think of these as um, a subscription-based wireless IPTV TV or a VOD video on demand at hotspots, which is basically an additional revenue generation opportunity for service providers when they can have their own advertisements in these hotspot areas, wherein obviously I'm assuming these advertisements are uh, video-based. So with this, I come to what are the issues with the present technology right now. So probably with, a, with something like video, the most important thing uh, is uh, transmission reliability and some sort of quality of service requirement. So the problem with the 802.11 link, uh, wireless link layer is that it does not provide any reliability for a multicast or broadcast frames. That is, there is no retransmission or link, ad link layer adaptation. And the other issue comes in uh, when you talk about multicast is receiver heterogeneity. Basically, different receivers have different channel conditions, different device capabilities. And in a typical multicast scenario, you would expect receivers to join at random times in the session and leave at random times from the session. So the idea is uh, there is no particular set uh, receiver topology in these cases. So again, uh, so again, video multicast in such cases is uh, a challenge. The other issue is scalability. When I talk about scalability, what I mean is uh, how does, uh, if, you, if one is designing a system, well, how, how would that system scale with number of APs per wireless, uh, wireless LAN and the number of clients which, are, which can be served by a single AP? Uh, the, the other inherent issues with uh, wireless uh, LAN technologies is uh, trying to provide seamless hand handoff support. The idea is, let's say, if you, are, uh, if you are being served by one particular AP and you want to switch to another AP, as an end user, you would not want any glitches in your video. You would expect a seamless handover. So, and, uh, and all these technology, what I'm talking about, transmission reliability, some kind of quality of service, trying to uh, address scalability and seamless handoff support, you would want all of this to be done in, a, in an efficient manner. So, because uh, wireless land resources are very scarce, so you would want to use them in the most efficient manner. So, we try, uh, okay. So our contributions in this, in this thesis is basically to design an efficient and robust video over uh, wireless LAN multicast system to satisfy some of the QoS requirements for multiple video receivers. So the idea is basically to recover from uh, packet losses. We, uh, we use uh, strong application layer forward error correction techniques, and we have uh, intelligent adaptive algorithms for high reliability and efficiency. The idea is FEC packets are sent on demand over the wireless LANs. And, uh, we have, uh, and our uh, uh, clients basically can adapt to the varying receiver topology and the varying channel conditions of multiple receivers. We also, uh, uh, we, our, uh, our uh, system also sub, uh, has, uh, has uh, support for uh, a seamless handoff wherein we call our system multi-group uh, hybrid, uh, multi hybrid ARQ to re recover from burst losses. Here we also propose certain FEC message header formats. Basic, this is basically done to ensure complete backward compatibility with players which probably do not understand FEC or, or any such case. So I'll now uh, discuss a few of the existing approaches already there. So the idea is uh, for, uh, for multicast usually, uh, there's this concept of application layer FEC where um, you treat the, you, the channel is treated as a packet erasure channel. What that basically means is, uh, at the application layer, either a packet is completely received or it is, uh, or, uh, it is completely dropped. There is nothing like a packet has been partially received or it is an error. So the idea is, uh, uh, so how application layer FEC works is basically you have a set of case source data packets. It goes through an RS FEC encoder, Reed Solomon encoding, and what you generate is redundant packets where. Uh, and and uh, where you have uh, and the total number of packets is n, so you have basically n minus k redundant number of packets. Now these packets are basically sent over the wireless LAN, and uh, due to uh, due to channel losses or uh, channel conditions, uh, let's say you receive uh, k dash number of packets where k dash is greater than uh, the original k pa where k dash is either greater than or equal to the k packets. So the idea is as long as you receive any k dash number of packets out of these n packets. You, uh, where k dash is greater than or equal to k, you can reconstruct your original data. That is the basic idea of application layer FEC. So, but however, uh, how this application, uh, so with this, uh, so in this particular case, what we are using is uh, static FEC wherein 
you have n and k and constant and you send all of these packets over the wire over the wireless channel. So this uh, this kind of scheme has uh, inherent dra drawbacks that it cannot adapt to any channel condition. Basically you always have to design your system according to the worst case channel condition. You have to add in redundancy according to the worst case channel condition and transmit all the packets. So the other popular approach is some kind of application layer ARQ mechanism wherein uh, the server is going to retransmit the number of lost packets. So obviously since you, we are talking about uh, video, vid video delivery here, you have to limit the maximum number of retransmissions by the server because uh, video inherently is, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is like susceptible to delays. So you ha it is delay constrained basically video applications. So, but however, for multicast uh, application layer ARQ actually does, is not very efficient and does not scale well. The idea is different receivers would be losing out on different number of packets and uh, the sender must retransmit all, all the packets. The idea is like, let's say one client loses out packets with sequence number 11 and 12 and you have another client losing out packets with sequence number 13 and 14. The server would have to transmit all 11, 12, 13 and 14. So basically, so this, this is why we say the system does not scale very well and again, uh, all the receivers must, must send their ACKs and NACs to the sender which again cause the, causes the classical NAC implosion problem which all of us know. So next is this uh, stagger adaptive FEC system uh, which is again uh, which was uh, first proposed by one of the one of the earlier students here at PinLab and Dr. Hong. So the basic idea in this particular system is uh, you have a video the video stream and the FE streams are, FEC streams are transmitted in different multicast groups. So you can see the video stream here and you can see these different uh, staggered FEC streams. Basically the FEC streams are delayed from the video stream to achieve temporal diversity. What exact, exactly temporal diversity and why staggering, I'll come, come to that in the next slide. So the idea is basically these receivers there which are there are, are going to dynamically join or leave the FEC multicast group based on their channel conditions using IGMP, Internet uh, Group Management Protocol. So and uh, the important thing here to note is that if the join time is less than the time shift between the video and the FEC stream, then the, corres and the corresponding parity packets will be received to recover video packets, basically this time shift. And uh, so here uh, to uh, uh, save on wireless bandwidth, data for our multicast group would not be tra transmitted in wireless network if no receiver joins the group. So the idea is from the streaming server you will have all the FEC packets being sent up till the switch or the access point, whichever can understand IGMP. And then from there, they are going to be held back and accordingly, if a receiver is going to be asking to join a particular FEC multicast group, then only will the packets be sent over the wireless LAN. So as I said, FEC data is transmitted on demand in the, on, in the wireless LAN for bandwidth efficiency. So why exactly staggering and how does staggering help? Well, uh, this figure is going to uh, uh, explain how does staggering help us from uh, to recover from burst loss. Let's say we ha you have the uh, media stream and the FEC stream. So the uh, uh, squares here represent one FEC block and the circles here represent another FEC block. So let's say during uh, handover you lo lose out all those packets which are shown in the block. Now if you do, uh, and that second case is uh, where you have uh, the media stream and the FEC stream which are time shifted. So in the first case if you will see, so uh, you have uh, you receive you're going to be receiving six uh, six video packets uh, six packets basically so that is fine as long as you receive any four packets you can recover from losses so you are fine with the first FE, uh, first FEC block but what about the second block in the second block you just receive two packets and there is no way you can decode your decode uh, there is no way you can decode uh, the packets but let's see what happens in the next case in this case when we uh, time shift the packets in the first case uh, uh, for the first block you you receive one, two, three, and the fourth packet here. So you can recover, you can, you can decode this block. And in the, for the second block, you receive four packets here and one packet here. So you can decode this block also. So this is how basically uh, staggering helps us uh, to uh, recover from burst losses, which is uh, typically during handoffs. So delay FEC groups by at, le by at least the multicast group joint dealer, which is uh, the IGMP group joint dealer. So what are the advantages of this scheme? Well. Uh, this scheme does not depend, the uh, one advantage is this scheme does not depend on the number of APs being served by the video server. You can have, so because uh, the, each uh, AP basically controls the number of uh, uh, the FEC groups which it should transmit over the wireless link according to each individual, individual receiver's request. So as such this scheme is very adaptive to local wireless channel conditions. 
But however, the problem with this uh, scheme is FEC overhead granularity. Basically, how do you uh, granulate as in how much amount of overhead should you transmit in your in your these multicast groups, in your different multicast groups, how, how do you, how much of FEC do you transmit in each group? And the idea is you cannot have a lot of multicast groups because this will again cause a lot of feedback information of uh, group join and leaves being sent by the clients uh, to, the, to, the, to the access point. And also there is no feedback information at the server. What, I basic, what, what this basically means is the video server has no idea as in uh, are the packets actually being uh, received by the clients or it has no idea of uh, how well the clients are actually behaving in this system. Oops, sorry. So, and another thing is, um, so this system, so this system was act when the this system was actually proposed. Uh, but uh, even though this system was proposed with multiple FEC groups, there was uh, uh, in implementation there was only one FEC group which was actually used. So the idea is, uh, when there was just one FEC group, uh, it could recover very well from uh, handoffs. But uh, for, uh, for uh, random uh, packet losses, which is very typical over a wireless LAN, this, uh, this scheme, uh, so th uh, in implementation, this was not done. So and then another thing is uh, the source uh, packets, uh, the source, uh, uh, so basically FEC information had to be added to the source media packets in this particular case, uh, in implementation for this particular case. And uh, so because of which certain players which uh, do not understand padding of uh, RTP packets, real-time protocol packets, could not play, play uh, could not uh, play uh, in the in their video player with the, in this particular scheme. So we come to another uh, interesting scheme, the hybrid ARQ scheme, in which uh, hybrid ARQ is uh, uh, much more efficient than uh, uh, application. Yeah. So the idea is basically. Uh, you have this video group and so if you have just one FEC group, let's say if you have just one FEC group, now if, if, I, if I'm a client here and if I just receive, let's say if I have, a, let's say just 5% packet loss, but if I just join this FEC group and this FEC group is, let's say, transmitting 100% of the packets, 100% overhead, so I will be actually receiving 100% overhead over the wireless link. But I would just require actually 5% of the packets, so I would be receiving a lot of extra redundant packets which I don't want. So what I basically do is I am gonna uh, uh, stagger my. I, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna distribute the overhead in different F, different FEC groups. Let's say I'm gonna put 0.2 percent overhead in this, 0.4 percent overhead in this. So in in this case, so if I say 0.2 percent over, what I mean what I mean is 20 percent overhead uh, basically. So in this case, let's say if a client is experiencing 15 percent packet loss, he would just join this group. Let's say a client is experiencing 30 percent packet loss, maybe he needs to join this and this group. To recover from losses. So the, are you trying to save bandwidth on the wired backend? Or are you no, no, over the wireless. Save on the wireless. On the wireless. On the wired, these, all these packets are actually sent. All the FEC packets are sent up till the switch or the AP. So if you only have packet loss of 5%, then you have a station right next to you that has packet loss of 70%. Then how do you want to run? No, in that yeah. So in 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 that case exactly. In that case, you over the wireless line, you would be receiving all the seventy percent of the packets. So I, I, we will we will come back. So so that's exactly where we say that the uh, in, in yeah this does not scale very well. As in, you would be receiving seventy percent of the packets. So so in the in if 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 you have just one one AP and you have uh, multiple groups here and this guy requires seventy percent, then then the, there is no help. Then it is uh, then you will be having seventy percent of the packets over. No, no, no. In that case, no. In that case, it really does not make a difference. In this case, uh, in that case, you, there would be seventy percent of the packets over the. Over. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what we solve is how to. Uh, so the idea is, let's say if you have multiple APs here, multiple access points. How exactly, like, let's say if there are, if this guy has a five. Let's say if this guy has something like five percent packet loss. And uh, in, in uh, clients in this uh, uh, AP, under this AP have let's say five percent packet loss, and clients in the, under this AP have let's say twenty percent packet loss. So how 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 is this going to work when you have multiple APs? How how is this system going to scale, and how do, how do we solve overhead scenarios for the, for this particular cases, for these cases? So you're assuming that the packet loss at each AP or along this line that each AP is similar. Yeah. So hybrid ARQ, um, 
So as I said, uh, hybrid ARQ is more efficient than FEC and pure ARQ, especially for multicast. Basically, lost video packets can be received uh, as long as uh, you uh, successfully receive K packets out of the encoded packets. The idea is the server initially multicasts the source, uh, the source media packets or uh, some FEC pa or a few of the FEC pa packets based on the channel conditions. Excuse me. Uh, one or more receivers basically send an act to request a retransmission, and the server retransmits. Uh, the maximum number of FEC parity packets requested by all the receivers in the multicast uh, group. And if there are still uh, further lost packets, a receiver can again uh, knack for the extra parity packets. So uh, the advantage of this system is, uh, well, it is efficient and adapts to multiple receiver channel conditions very well. And uh, different receivers uh, use uh, the same FEC parity packet to re recover from their different uh, lost media packets. But uh, the idea is this uh, solution, again, does not uh, scale very well in, the, in terms of number of access points. This is basically because retransmission is controlled by the server at the application layer and not to, uh, by the APs. And uh, so uh, in this idea, you, uh, as I said, uh, the re you can have FEC packets being sent over the wireless channel by all the APs, even if some APs do not require those packets. So now we come to. Uh, our uh, solution, which is the multi-group hybrid ARQ, or MHARQ. Basically, what we try to do is combine the advantages of both staggered adaptive FEC and uh, hybrid ARQ to achieve, some, uh, to achieve a better scalability, flexibility, and of course, bandwidth efficiency. So, and, uh, so actually, multi-group hybrid ARQ, this MHARQ is actually a special case of staggered adaptive FEC and HARQ. Basically, our MHARQ system can either fall back to staggered adaptive FEC case and the hybrid ARQ case. So it is pretty much similar where you have the streaming server actually sending out packets and you have the, so you have the concept of these uh, non-delayed FEC groups, delayed FEC groups and in addition to that you also have a, a client sending out uh, uh, an ARQ request in case they have, a, in case they have uh, lost a certain number of packets. So the idea of uh, this is basically, the, the, the idea here is uh, the first FEC group is always joined to recover from uh, random errors which are very inherent in a wireless channel. So these, these are these non-delayed FEC groups which a client is always going to join. And the remaining delayed FEC groups are dynamically joined. If a, if a, if a particular client is, is uh, experiencing uh, losses, then, then only he's going to be joining uh, those uh, FEC groups. So an AP would not transmit the delayed FEC in the, in the wireless network if no receiver under it joins the group. And uh, again, the, obviously, the delay of the FEC group is a design parameter which can be changed according to the channel conditions. And uh, in case of losses irrecoverable with uh, the staggered adaptive FEC, the client would send a hybrid ARQ request to the ARQ server. Basically, these packets are, with, uh, are basically sent by the video streaming server to the ARQ server. And uh, in case uh, when, the losses are, uh, when the losses cannot be either recovered with any of these multicast groups, then you're gonna have. A, then the client is gonna request for the for these hybrid uh, for the hybrid ARQ packets, and uh, well, if the losses exceed a very high amount, which is three by two of the K, which where K is the N of N K of the Reed Solomon code, the client is gonna send for retransmission. Uh, can also send for a retransmission of the original source video packets. So I'll now discuss some of the. Implementation details in the, uh, for the streaming server, for, for the different uh, uh, servers and the clients in our uh, setup. So basically, uh, so you have these video RTP packets coming in. And uh, so the FEC encoding module uh, is actually pay, placed after the packetization, basically when you have the RTP packets generated and before the UDP layer. And uh, we use uh, Luigi Rizzo's software implementation of Reed Solomon codes uh, for encoding of FEC packets, which are freely ava available online. And the idea is as soon as K packets are available at the server buffer, we copy, a, uh, we copy those packets to a local FEC buffer. And then we perform FEC encoding on the media packets to generate uh, N minus K FEC packets. We also uh, have an FEC header is appended to these uh, FEC packets in addition to the uh, RTP header. And then they are sent out according to the delay of the delay multicast groups. Basically, what this FEC header is, uh, it contains all the FEC information, which is basically NNK for the Reed Solomon code things like sequence, uh, sequence base number for the coding block and uh, things like that in this FEC header. And uh, the ARQ FEC pack packets are actually uh, appended with an additional header, header, which is then sent to the ARQ server uh, in unicast, basically, and contains uh, stream information. 
and uh, the, what the ARQ server does is basically it strips uh, the this ARQ uh, this additional header from the ARQ FEC packets and then buffers the packets for the different streams. Uh, another in, another interesting thing is uh, synchronization of audio and video. Since we are having a lot of buffering at the media streaming server and uh, encoding and decoding operations taking place, it is very important uh, for a video application uh, to ensure that uh, there is always synchronization of audio and video. So traditionally, audio and video have different bit rates, and uh, video has a higher bit rate than uh, audio. So the, the thing is, if we buffer the same number of uh, N, uh, same number of uh, audio and video packets before FEC encoding, there might be synchronization issues because there might be more video packets in the buffer since video has a higher bit rate, and you might be waiting for the audio packets to fill up to the number k. So hence, we have a variable n and k uh, for the Reed-Solomon codes in our implementation. How we tackle this problem is basically we introduce this parameter max k and max t. The idea is whenever the audio or video buffer is full with either max k packets or if the packets have been buffered for a max t amount of time, we will uh, directly perform the FEC encoding operation on the video packets or the audio packets. So as I said, so no, no matter how many audio or video packets are present in this buffer, as long as we reach either max k or the max t parameter, they are, they, we, are, we send out those packets. So we perform the encoding pa packets and then send out the packets according to the different FEC group multicast delay. And uh, so this way, the audio and the video packets do not have to wait in uh, the queue buffers for a non-deterministic time. So this is uh, a diagram of the client proxy for our MHARQ system. So basically, you have this uh, concept of this FEC proxy, which is uh, there, which, which is there in between this uh, WLAN interface and this uh, RT and this video player. So Basically, we try the, our FEC proxy is completely transparent from the video player and the uh, uh, WLAN interface. What the video player is basically doing is it's, it is just going to be waiting for packets on a particular uh, port of, on a particular uh, port, port port. And what so what our FEC proxy is going to be doing is basically it is going to receive packet, the video packets and the FEC packets. And uh, it is going to be uh, it'll, it is going to do a channel estimation and it is either going to uh, decide either it should do a, do an adaptive FEC or basically uh, send for ARQ uh, FEC packets. It's going to receive all these packets, buffer these packets in this FEC proxy, and uh, perform the encoding, uh, perform the decoding operation uh, for those uh, video for, for the, the video packets and the FEC packets. And basically, the re uh, recovered RTB packets can either be sent back again on the same host uh, using the loopback interface, or they can be sent to another client, another client, uh, client uh, through the, through uh, using uh, IP. And uh, so for the video player, uh, it is just like uh, the video packets are coming in uh, through a particular port number and a particular IP address. So that the, 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 the video player uh, does not uh, really know about any FEC proxy in the middle. Uh, I'll, just, I'll go into a little bit of uh, proxy or uh, client proxy implementation details. Basically, the idea is each client maintains a source buffer, which is basically the media buffer and an FEC buffer. The thing is, the source buffer is basically a time-limited linked list. So the thing is, the source buffer is going to buffer t seconds of media packets and then play out the packets, no matter whether the, all the packets for that particular block have been received or not. Uh, what happens is, when a, uh, so when a client receives a media packet, it is just uh, stored in the source buffer. And for backward compatibility, uh, as I said, n there is nothing, uh, no changes being made to the source packets in our uh, implementation. All the, uh, all the information is actually added to the FEC packet so that uh, clients which do not uh, understand, which do not have a FEC proxy running can also play back, uh, can also play back video using in this system. So when a client uh, basically receives a parity packet, it gets all the information about the FEC block. When I mean uh, gets all the information about the FEC block is basically uh, the, uh, the FEC packets have an FEC header which have uh, Im information like the N and K and the sequence base number which block it belongs to. And uh, as I said, FEC packet contain these FE FEC parameters. So we have a new data. New, we, we allocate a new FEC data structures, and the media and basically we mark all the media packets which belong to. Once once we once once we have this FEC packet, we can so we can uh, tell, we can deterministically tell which uh, packet which source packets belong to which block, and then we mark all these pack. Then we start marking all these uh, source packets, and as soon as K packets for a particular FEC block is received, we perform the FEC decoding operation and uh, 
we insert the newly decoded uh, RTP packets back into the source buffer. No, no, we don't, we don't touch that. We come to the ARQ server implementation now. Basically, uh, so we use Linux packet capturing tool uh, libcap basically to capture packets on the Ethernet link. The idea is basically you have these network packets coming here. You have, these C, you have this module called C packet capture, which is going to capture all the packets and send them to the application layer. Where we have our uh, where, where we have a UDP parcel module, which is going to basically uh, distinguish between um, if it is a video packet, it is going to send it to a stream C program stream manager. If it is an FEC packet, it is going to send it to a FEC stream manager. Or if it is an ARQ request by some of the client, it is going to be processed using with a cache control message handler. So and basically, what what basically these streams have is they have a trans uh, they have a thread running which basically keeps on checking for any new ARQ requests and accordingly sends out packets. So we can, so how ARQ message handling is done at the server is basically when once an ARQ message is received, it is processed according to uh, uh, FEC ARQ request. Is is it either a request for FEC packets? Or a request for the original media packets, or a combination of both the uh, FEC packets and uh, source media packets. So the idea is either if it is a just a request for uh, media packets, it's going to go through a data request. If it is a request for uh, FEC packets, it's going to go through this. Uh, or if it is a hybrid request, which is basically a combination of both the uh, FEC packets and video packets, then it's uh, basically it goes through another function, which is going to uh, break break them down as two individual requests of a data request and uh, of a media packet request and uh, for FEC request. So how this works? Uh, so another thing is uh, once a, once an FEC packet is transmitted by the ARQ server, it is deleted. The idea is basically one FEC packet can only recover from one loss, from one error. So it does not make sense uh, in buffering that packet for any longer in the ARQ server. So the, and but the media packets are buffered for a particular time delay after which uh, which is again a design parameter and after a particular delay we can ju we just delete uh, delete out all the packets. Uh, this is basically just uh, this is just uh, to make sure that the buffers do not overflow. So I'll come to the client um, adaptive algorithm for uh, our uh, group and uh, group join and leave. So. Now, in our implementation, a client will always join the media multicast group and the first FEC multicast group. The FEC first multicast group, as I have uh, told previously, it is always joined to recover from random errors which are inherent in a WLAN scenario. So the idea is when a client receives the first parity, if, uh, first, uh, uh, parity packet for an FEC block, the client is going to look into the source buffer and it is going to estimate the loss because then it, it, it marks all the packets and it can estimate uh, the amount of loss uh, it is experiencing, and decide, uh, and uh, accordingly decide uh, which delayed FEC multicast groups to join. The client has a complete idea of how many, uh, what, what, is, what are the, what is the overhead in each FEC multicast group, and according to maybe a long-term channel condition and the present channel condition, it can decide which FEC uh, delayed FEC multicast groups the client should, uh, the client needs to join. Also, if the difference uh, of the sequence number between the last and the first unmarked media packet. For any for any particular track is greater than uh, k plus and alpha, which wherein uh, we have alpha as a as a is just a design parameter. The client can assume like all the parity packets for the block have uh, have actually been lost, and then in that particular case, the client can probably join all the all the FEC groups and the ARQ groups to request request for extra parity packets. We also have this uh, ARQ suppression algorithm. Basically, uh, the implementation of the suppression al algorithm is motivated from a paper by Don Towsley, which is parity based loss recovery for reliable multicast transmission. So the idea here is um, the, client of, the client is not immediately, whenever a client estimates that he needs to send an ARQ request, he is not immediately going to send, send his request. A timer is basically inserted in an event queue with a timer expiry given as a K minus loss packet into a constant and k minus loss packet plus 1 into a constant basically this is just a window the idea is basically the idea is higher loss uh, higher value of loss packet impl implies a lower while value of timer expiry so let's say if you have lost 20 packets and another client which has lost 30 packets so typically you uh, so what is going to happen is basically the guy who has lost 30 packets he's going to 
finish his timer faster and he is going to send out his ARQ request first. Now all these clients are basically, the ARQ's request is sent in a multicast group upon timer expiry. So other receivers, when this uh, first receiver who has just lost 20 packets, he's going to hear that uh, there is a client requesting for 30 packets, he's, gonna, uh, he, he's not going to send his own request. He's going to suppress his own request because he knows that somebody else has requested for a higher number of packets and he, since he would be getting 30 packets, he would surely get his 20 packets out of that. So now I come to our uh, experimental system basically. So this is just again a top level view of how, we, how our experimental system is. So this is basically a streaming server where you can uh, also assume you have a VOD server or a live video server. You have the streaming server with, uh, AR, with, uh, with the ARQ server inbuilt and uh, the streaming server is going to send out staggered and the adaptive, the, the uh, streaming server is going to send the staggered adaptive FEC and the hybrid ARQ packets. And uh, so you, this, is, this is the switch here and you have these uh, two separate uh, uh, WLANs and uh, receivers. Uh, so you, ha you can have clients moving away from this uh, WLAN to this LAN. So this is basically, uh, 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 this is like how you would support seamless handoff. And uh, so this is again, the, this is the video group, these are the staggered FEC groups and the, you have the ARQ group. Uh, I'll come to uh, some of the results. Uh, I'll come to my uh, our results which we have obtained. So, this particular experiment was basically carried out at uh, Thompson Princeton Labs. So, uh, what we have is uh, we use a Reed Solomon code uh, NNK 255 127. The viewer used is uh, QuickTime Player by Apple Link. The video sequence is a very from a very popular movie Happy Feet. The video bitrate which we use is 800 kilobits per second and uh, we use uh, we use H.264 for uh, basically encoding efficiency, and the usage scenario, as I said, is a typical office uh, environment at uh, Thompson Labs. Uh, channel bitrate is out, uh, out, and the packet error rate uh, measured is basically 5% average per block, per FEC block. What I mean. So this is actually the what we get uh, uh, if we. Uh, so this is the 5% uh, error which you see, and this is uh, with our system, with our MHARQ system, uh, the video quality which you see. We also uh, designed a few network monitoring tools basically basically uh, for our uh, system. So this, this particular uh, uh, GUI which you see over here is uh, basically uh, monitors the particular losses in the network. So the idea here is uh, this red, red plot is basically showing you the packet losses which, which are being experienced by the clients. The green plot, this plot here is basically the K for the read Solomon codes. And the yellow pl plot is uh, the actually uh, received packets uh, per block for the f for uh, receive per block. The idea is as long as uh, the, the number of received packets is above this K, you are fine. You can always decode your packets. The second you fall below this, you have an undecodable block which you cannot decode. So if you see from here, our, uh, uh, our uh, adaptive algorithm is pretty dynamic as in it uh, varies very well with the change in packet loss. And uh, the other uh, GUI which we developed here is also this uh, Multicast group subscription, uh, which uh, shows uh, which shows you the multicast group subscription overhead in real time. Basically, what this has is uh, you have this bar which uh, shows the video group, and this this is always joined. And you have the remaining. You have uh, in this particular case, you have a uh, four stagger, uh, and this uh, there is one uh, non-delayed FEC group which is again always joined. And you have three delayed FEC groups and one ARQ group. So in this particular example, you have a uh, five percent overhead in all these uh, four FEC groups and eighty percent overhead in the ARQ group. So this is just a snapshot of uh, during running of our system. Okay, I'll come to uh, comparison of the error recovery schemes wherein I compare uh, SafeEc, which is a staggered adaptive FEC system, the hybrid ARQ system, and the multi-group hybrid ARQ system. So this experiment was carried out on orbit, basically. Uh, the idea is you have the streaming server, you have, you, we have a streaming server and you have an ARQ server and uh, so and uh, you have a, uh, this, uh, through a switch, they're they are connected to, uh, through a switch to two different access points and uh, AP1 and AP2 and you have client on this access, you have a client on this access point and you have a client on this access point and these two are basically operating uh, in different channels. Now the idea is, uh, so the idea was to see how, uh, how, how, do, how are these three systems going to behave when let's say I just increase the noise levels 
on this particular access point. We want to see what, what, what exactly happens to this access point and therein. So we are just going to increase the noise on this particular, uh, for, for this particular uh, uh, access point, for the clients associated with this access point. So in this system, uh, these are the, this is the design parameter which we use wherein for the staggered adaptive FEC scheme, this is the kind of overhead we, we, we put. Uh, the first FEC scheme is uh, non-delayed, so that we have 5% overhead there. For the next is 5%, 10, 15, and 65. For the hybrid, we just put in a little bit of uh, overhead in, uh, in the first FEC group, and the remaining, all the packets are there in the ARQ group. And uh, for our particular MHARQ system, we put 5%, 5%, 5%, 5% in the FEC groups, in the staggered FEC groups, and 80% overhead in the ARQ group. So I will come to the result of this. So the idea is uh, all these three schemes can actually recover from the packet losses. But uh, what happens to the overhead? For AP1, for this particular AP in which uh, we have increased the noise levels, you will see that um, this is, uh, so for hybrid ARQ, as you keep on increasing the noise levels, for all the three, uh, for, in fact, for all the three schemes, as you keep on increasing the noise levels, which is basically average, the link loss is basically increasing from 5, 10, 15, 20, 35. Uh, to 30% 30, 30 of uh, packet loss, you're seeing the overhead of this system is going to, the overhead, that is the number of uh, FEC packets you're receiving, is going to continuously keep on increasing. So what this, uh, what this figure alone gives you an idea is that uh, actually hybrid ARQ achieves uh, the lowest overhead out of all the three schemes. So you, so one would be like, okay, so hybrid ARQ is probably better than um, our MHARQ, which is uh, somewhere in between. Uh, staggered adaptive FEC and hybrid ARQ. But let us look at uh, what happens in AP2. So since uh, for a hybrid ARQ system, you have just one multicast group. So all the packets are actually being sent over that multicast group. So even if in the, for this particular case, even if, this, uh, even if clients in this, uh, in this group are requ requesting for just, let's say, 5% of the packets, if, this, if these guys are going to request for 30% of the packets, all the 30% of the packets are also being going to be sent out over this uh, over this particular network over here. So this is what we see here that the blue line here is closely resembles in AP uh, in AP2 also it, it, this uh, closely resemble, resembles the overhead keeps on increase uh, is almost the same in both the APs. But uh, you'll see in this particular case that uh, staggered adaptive FEC and MHARQ actually scale very well because uh, in this uh, in the in AP2 basically we in a client loss, of, packet loss of just five percent. So in that case, they just would join, let's say, uh, the first and the second uh, FEC, uh, the first and the second FEC group, and they are fine. They don't, and uh, they are fine. So you, if you see in this particular group, the over in the in, in the other network, the overhead is fairly constant. So as I said, MHARQ achieves go and. Uh, so in this case, you, as I said, MHA, our MHARQ system is actually a combination of both staggered adaptive FEC and hybrid ARQ. So it achieves good performance for both AP1 and AP2. Now, so this was an experiment where we showed uh, how our system is scalable with the um, number of APs. Now I come to the issue as in how does our system perform uh, uh, in a typical hotspot uh, scenario wherein uh, under one AP you have a lot of clients. So again, we use uh, Ar uh, Orbit is used for, for experimentation in this case. So we use noise till around minus 35 dB, and then we use some kind of packet filtering model. The idea is on Orbit, you have these four noise antennas placed on the four corners of the grid. We use uh, one of them as a streaming server, one as the ARQ server, and you have um, and one of uh, one of the nodes is used as the access point. And you have an IGMP sniffer basically running here on this node, which is gonna intercept uh, which is going to intercept all the IGMP requests and accordingly send out packets and you have these clients which are randomly chosen over this uh, over the uh, entire grid so you noise and the idea is that uh, the problem is uh, after a particular level uh, the noise level suddenly just de uh, increases drastically and then uh, you cannot control uh, suddenly you will either you will be experiencing packet loss of uh, losses of let's say 5% on the clients or suddenly you'll be like it's increased to 70 or 80%. So there's no way you can tune the, tune that. So this it is for this reason uh, after a particular uh, uh, limit we we switch on uh, switch to this uh, packet filtering model. Oh well, we thought uh, like uh, the we started off because. So 
It's always better you, you use noise generator, right? So, but the, the, but the, the noise generator doesn't give you very good, you know, granularity. So, so yeah. you know, if you cannot use noise generator for that for that particular region, so you could switch back to stage two. So I'm trying to, to understand the this. This one is 35 dB. Do you have to get back to back in the error based on that, or is it just doing nothing? No, no, no. We we do get packet errors on, with minus thirty five dB. We have a constant of base packet error rate on. I guess it differs on the client for this. The different clients have different packet errors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Markov model is the same for all clients. No, no. So in the Markov model, we again uh, so we randomly choose clients with a packet loss of uh, between zero to twenty percent. We I randomly. Uh, Put in uh, losses uh, for those clients between zero to twenty percent. Bursty, bursty. Basically, it's a Gilbert model, which is a two-state uh, Markov model. So this is the configuration setup. Basically, um, so we're using channel forty-eight. So basically, using eighty-two point one one eight transmission power is sixteen dBm. Video source used is um, again from a popular movie, Catch Me If You Can. Video bit rate is seven hundred kilobits per second. And noise injection, as I said, uh, additive wide Gaussian noise till five percent, and then packet, uh, then packet filtering. Noise bandwidth uses twenty megahertz, and uh, the system setup is the first multicast group is the video group, and the remain and uh, you have a, for a, you have a, this is the non-delayed FEC group, and you have three delayed FEC groups with five percent overhead. You have an ARQ retransmission group which has a maximum eighty percent overhead uh, to give you a total overhead of hundred uh, percent. And uh, the seventh multicast group is basically an ARQ request group wherein uh, you listen for packets and you send out ARQ requests. Again, NNK for the Reed Solomon codes uses 255, 127. And uh, as I said, the packet filtering model, we randomly choose clients with, for, from, with losses from 0 to 20%. So, uh, so this, this this graph is basically uh, showing you the comparison between uh, the actual packet loss and the residual packet loss using MHARQ. So this is uh, when you have no loss. Uh, this is when you don't use uh, MHARQ. So the basically the four things are no noise, minus 50 dB, minus 40 dB, minus 35 dB, and then using this Markov model where in uh, you have uh, clients where wherein we choose clients with uh, zero to 20 percent. So you can see as in with an increase uh, with an increase in the noise levels, basically the actual packet loss uh, experienced by the by the clients keep on increasing. Uh, but however, um, so the idea is, uh, however, with MHARQ, if you see, this is actually this scale is actually uh, goes up to eight percent, and this is actually 0 0.1, which actually corresponds to somewhere on this this part of the graph, which is actually somewhere here. So basically, for you, if you if you can see here, so what we what I want to take for, uh, what I want you to take away from this particular graph is basically for an average packet loss of around six percent for 60 clients. The average residual packet loss, that is the packet loss after uh, employing our scheme, is approximately 0.02%, which is approximately no video packet loss. So the next thing is like, uh, the next thing we. How does that result compared to the previous approaches? Uh, I don't have graph for. for how, how that works with a staggered adaptive FEC. But uh, intuitively, uh, all three, as I said, all three schemes would be able to recover from packet losses. The idea is how do you come, uh, how, do, how do you efficiently manage overhead in these cases? All three schemes would work well with recovering from packet losses. The, all the three schemes can recover from the packet losses. It is a question about uh, managing overhead. So next is uh, overhead incurred using uh, MHARQ. So again, it's the same setup. Uh, I uh, we now we in, in in this particular case now we ma measure the. So the idea is, let's say when uh, the number of clients are increasing, it is important to note like how does uh, the overhead actually scale? As in, does uh, the overhead uh, keep on increasing when 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 the number of clients increase in a, in, a, in a, as in a typical hotspot scenario? So if you see from these uh, graphs, actually it remains fairly constant. For an increasing number of clients, you would uh, see that whatever is the initial overhead for even for 10 clients, it usually st uh, still uh, stays stab stable for 60 clients also. So which says that our system actually uh, fares very, uh, as in, is pretty very scalable when uh, you talk about an increasing number of clients. So these two, uh, so right now till now what I have discussed is basically downlink overhead. 
Now I will uh, also discuss some uh, uplink overhead wherein in this particular case in our experiments here since there is a lot of uh, join and leave multicast join and leave messages. So it was important to investigate how does the multicast subscription overhead also behave. So as I, as I previously said we use uh, IGMP for our multicast uh, group subscription and uh, as, you, as you can see from these uh, figures for the different uh, noise levels we, we see that the IGMP overhead is fairly stable for an increasing number of clients. Basically IGMP also has a suppression algorithm which suppresses uh, the number of uh, joins and leaves. Now in this particular experiment, um, so this is basically to validate uh, how well the ARQ suppression algorithm works. So this uh, is, you can see with an increasing number of clients, uh, you can see the classical uh, NAC implosion problem with this, uh, with this blue plot as in as the number of clients keep on increasing, they keep on sending NACs uh, as the, uh, yeah, for, five for a Markov model with 5% packet loss per block. But uh, if you use uh, our particular scheme uh, the, with the ARQ suppression algorithm inbuilt, this uh, remains fairly stable at approximately uh, 0.4 messages per 0.4 ARQ message requests per block. What was the parameter used to suppress? Um, what was the timer? Uh, I don't remember uh, right now, but uh, I think it was around uh, one, uh, a few milliseconds basically. Basically, uh, so it actually depends. So all this is actually um, depends also on the the thing, the amount of time you're actually buffering the packets. Like for if you keep on changing the amount of time you're buffering in in your FEC proxy, let's say if you're bu buffering the packets for a very small time, you would want that uh, time constant like that TS, which I said, to be a very small number. Or we we use around eight seconds. We we use like eight eight seconds. We buffer the packets for around eight seconds and then play play out those packets. Okay, so this particular slide uh, basically uh, shows you the complete, uh, so this, this gives you a complete picture of uh, the overall gains achieved using our particular system. So basically in this particular setup uh, we vary the noise levels from minus 21 dB to minus 15 dBm and record the residual packet loss and overhead uh, experienced by a client running uh, our MHARQ algorithm. So basically uh, this blue plot over here shows you uh, with an increasing noise level obviously you would see a degrade, degradation in uh, the correct average correctly received packets and uh, the, this is and this pretty much shows that and uh, but uh, however with our MHARQ system you can see that uh, approximately till uh, till around uh, 16 dB you are fine and then uh, this uh, our scheme also uh, fails down here and the number of packet losses uh, keep on increasing. So basically the idea is um, what we the gains you get from our system uh, the gains from our system is basically from minus 21 dB to around minus 17.5 dBm. So in this range our system can uh, contain the residual packet loss at the cost of increased overhead. Obviously uh, as uh, the packet uh, as uh, the noise level keeps on increasing the packet loss uh, is keep on increasing and as such the overhead of the entire you know, over the, the WLAN keeps on increasing. So what I the, the idea is what uh, if uh, the idea is just to maintain a pa is, is to maintain a packet error rate of uh, less than one percent, we can approximate the gains for, with our system to be approximately uh, five dB. So this corresponds with a little bit of math. This corresponds to basically one point four six five times the gain in range extension. Basically, in, and uh, for this particular calculation, we assume uh, an attenuation constant of uh, three in the radio path loss, uh, path loss model. And obviously uh, packet losses in excess of 30% is generally irreparable wherein after this particular point, after this particular point here, our system also starts uh, going down. So that pretty much is uh, my talk. <laughs>